Wilson, you claim the defendant got you pregnant and now refuses to do anything for your four-year-old son, Jace, leaving you in financial and emotional distress. You say today's DNA test will prove he is Jace's father and you need him to step up and help you support your son. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Johnson, you state you are 100% certain you are not her child's biological father and have evidence to support your claim. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Wilson, I'll start with you. You say Mr. Johnson is doing nothing for Jace? Nothing at all. Explain. I've had my son um, for four years doing it all by myself since day one. Um, I'm sorry. It's all right. It's hard to look at him. Take your time. I know it's difficult. <laughs> You've had him by yourself. No help. He's four. I have been struggling, struggling, struggling as a single parent of two um, with Jace even more. Um, so, been trying to work, go to school. I got a degree. Amen. Um, got a job. Been working my job now for five years. Um, but doing it by myself. And when you look at your son and you think about those hard years, you ask yourself, why isn't the father here to help? Yes. Mr. Johnson, you say you know 100% you're not the biological father. Yes, Your Honor. So you have not done anything to help Ms. Wilson raise Jace? No, Your Honor. So tell the court why you chose to do nothing. Okay, first of all, when I got with Quadonna, she was dealing with her ex still, and he was still in the picture. No, I wasn't. So that's I a lie. I wasn't dealing with him. Wait, hold on. I want to understand this. When you all met, how did you even meet? I met his family in a grocery store, and we talked, just had a conversation, and they was like, well, you should meet my son, and you guys might, you know, really hit it off. You're around the same age. Found out we was living across the street from each other. And when you met Mr. Johnson, what was the exchange? When I first seen him, it was like, I felt like it was love at first sight. You did. So you saw him, and it... You, it just felt like you fell in love. Yep. And so now that you have Jace and there's been no interaction and no help, that devastates you even more. Yes. So, Mr. Johnson, she says she thought you were the man of her dreams. Yes, sir. Now you're doing nothing. That's correct. Tell the court why. Why did you take that position? You hit it off so well. Why? Because, Your Honor, as I stated before, she was still involved with her ex. He was still in the picture. My son clearly looks like her ex. So at this point, I'm confused. I'm delirious. I don't even stay in this state no more. I was in Missouri. This is why I contracted my story from my calculations. I was not even there when he was conceived. Yes, he was. Impossible. You're yes, saying you weren't even there when the baby was conceived? No, I was not. I was living in Missouri. So you submitted a calendar to the court. I want to understand this. So, Mr. Johnson, explain this. You say on April 17th you moved away? Yes, Your Honor. Jace was born February 2nd. Exactly. So, when you do your calculation and count back, she would have had to have been pregnant for 10 plus months for this. Correct, Your Honor. For you to be the father. Correct. Ms. Wilson, do you remember Mr. Johnson moving away? No. He never moved away? Mm mm. So when he's saying he was gone from April 17th until when Jace was born, that's not true? No, it's not. What is your testimony? It's not at all, because we had sex on his birthday. And when is that? April 30th. Impossible. And we had sex every day after that, and the last day we had sex was May 10th. How did we do that? And I was living in Missouri, though. He was here. I wasn't dreaming. No, that's... (laughs) That's incorrect, Your Honor. I was not here. Could you have the date wrong, sir? No, ma'am. So you never remember him moving away ever? Nope. That's a lie. So tell me what happened when you found out you were pregnant. When I found out I was pregnant, I called him and told him that I was pregnant. Before then, we, we had been trying to have a baby 
December of 2012, he spent Christmas with his other kids at my house. And during that time, when I finally moved into my apartment, which was March 1st of 2013, he came right after that in April. And he was there with me. We were doing it all the time because we planned on having a son. We was talking about getting married. I was like, well, I don't want to get married until we have the baby because I want to lose weight and fit in my dress. So I know for a fact that he was here. Were you talking about getting married and planning this baby, Mr. Johnson? No, ma'am. We sure weren't. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> no, Yon. So you're a man of few words, but I'm gonna need you to talk. Because <laughs> I'm gonna need you to testify as to what your recollection of this relationship is. Because you say you were out of town, but she has uh, laid out a whole host of activities that you all were involved in during the months when you say you were gone. I was absent. That's true, Yon. So I was not there. When she called me, I was in Missouri when she called me and told me she was pregnant. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. So what happened when you told him you were pregnant? What do you remember him saying? I don't even really recall what he was saying. I did kind of feel that he was happy about it. Oh, you did? So what's he... Because I knew we was planning it. So this was so the when you make the call, you think we did it. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. It's finally here because I, that was the day I was going back to get on birth control because I was off for a whole year. And you say it's a lie. You weren't happy. No, I was not, Yarn. How can I be happy when it's not my child? How can you, you know deny it? And and I wasn't even there when he was conceived. Oh, I was living God. in Missouri. I wish I had my text tubs with me. I could show you where I was at. I wish you had them I too. I wish I did. Because you ain't talking. I wish I, I wish I you had but them proof of something. I wish I did. You just disappear. And I, I hadn't seen him no more after June 4th for two years. Oh. So once you tell him you're pregnant, he never shows back up. Nope. So you go through all the doctor's appointments, this baby you planned. Baby shower, everything by myself. Doesn't show up at all until Jace is two years old? Yes. What happened, Mr. Johnson? You just didn't... No. You, you didn't even want to see the baby? No, Your Honor, I stopped communication with her because she told me she didn't want me to have nothing to do with her or her child's That's life. a lie. That is a lie. We got into it that over the phone. That is a lie. No. And she told me on no. the phone, no. well, since yeah. this is not working, then you don't have to be in our life at all like that, you know, getting all loud with me. So I hung up on her. That's what I do. I'm not finna argue with you. The situation is what it is. And that's why we're here today. Because I'm here to clear my name. So wait, the child is four years old. Four. You disappear for two years, even though you, you say you had a sexual relationship with her, but you left on a certain date, although, you know, Miss Wilson has several sexual encounters lined up, including your birthday, on into the next month, and she says you were still sexually active. Must have been but my But even call. if, even when I counted on that timeline, like, 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 let's really keep it real. Even if I counted on that timeline and you say, well, I was gone around that 10th month or so, as a person, as a man, wouldn't it be swirling in your mind like, well, what if the date for the doctor was off? What if something's off? What if it was my child? Two years? You just ghost? I had my life. She had hers. I moved. No, but the baby had a life, too. What happened the first time you saw Jace? You said... You were gone for two years? Uh, my mom was talking to me, and you know how some mothers are. They put pressure on sons, like, well, son, he looks like you. And they tell you this. to do the right thing. Pretty much. Uh-huh. Yes, yes Sean. Mm-hmm. So, at this point, I'm going to meet her at the laundromat with the child. I took the child to my cousin's house so, you know, so they could see him, and she was like, well, he does look like you because, you know, she's older. So, and as I proceeded to take him back to the laundromat, I pulled up. I'm not even there 10 minutes. Here comes the ex. He pulls up. The little boy running to him. Daddy, daddy. So oh. I bail out. And so now you think he's the biological father. Yes, I do, Yon. Did Jace run over to your ex and say, daddy, daddy, daddy? He sure did, because that's who he known. That's who he has known. And heard my daughter calling him daddy. So he figured, well, since my older sister do it, why should not? So, Mr. Johnson, what else do you know? What else have you heard? Actually, I'm glad you asked me that. She would go visit her ex two to three times a day. I mean, a week. 
and spend long hours over there. But as she quote unquote says, we're burning DVDs. Now, if you're leaving our house at 1, 12 o'clock, you come back at 8, come on now. Y'all burning more than DVDs. So you're talking... house, because you wasn't even with me. You're talking about before she was pregnant? Because it doesn't... Right, before she was pregnant, that's when she was going over there. So that's why I say, before I left, she was still dealing with this guy. You see what I'm saying? Okay. (laughs) Why do you say that like you know that for sure? Right. Because I saw them together before. I caught up with them, all kind of stuff. We we go, oh, you oh, did? Go, you caught up yes, doing girl. what? You... Yes, I did. Well, I wish you would come to court and present your proof and your testimony. I'm waiting. Because you caught us doing what? I you caught, caught you her doing what? Times. I said I caught you with him. <laughs> yeah, I, How did I caught you, you catch you. her? They was riding in the car together, quote, unquote, family time or whatever she calls it. That's what Whatever that she calls it. But you felt like you saw them interacting in a romantic way? No, I never caught them doing that, Your Honor. Never did. I want to understand your doubt. I didn't feel a connection. I didn't feel nothing. Even when I took him over to my family house. You're supposed to feel some kind of bond with your child. I have four of the kids that I take care of, Your Honor. And I got a bond with all of them. All my kids look like me, exactly like me. We have strong genes in our family. And I know for a fact that's not my son. What's really going on here? It's something else going on. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't know how you can be so nonchalant about an innocent boy. And your family says it's, they think it's yours. And whether you do or you don't believe it in your heart, the way that you have failed to show up consistently to even make this right, four years. Nobody could get a DNA test in four years? And I never denied him one either. The day I had him, I called him and told him, you could get it done. Every, all these, all these years. Look at him and tell him how let down you are. I'm hurt that I'm even standing here and have to go through this with you. I was in love with you. I loved you. I still love you. Because you're my child's father at the end of the day. Possibly. But I can't believe I'm standing here doing this with you right now. After all that we've been through, after everything we've been through, when I had Joe back, through all what you've been through, but me standing here, that's your son. We'll find out. I just want this to be over. I do too. This is hard to watch. It's hard to watch. Because it's like you all are oceans apart right now. Thank goodness this courtroom exists so we can get the answers we need. Because we got to move forward, people. We can't stay in this spot. Jerome, give me that envelope. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Wilson versus Johnson, when it comes to four-year-old Jace Wilson, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson. You are the father. What's up, that? Can I say something, Your Honor? As long as it's productive and positive. Yes, ma'am. As I stand here today, I can apologize to you as a man. I apologize. That's a good start. You're still not gonna change four years you missed. <laughs> Off assumptions. Okay, all I can do is make it right, though. All I can do is make it right and live for it for right now. If you allow me to do that. I never denied you. This is a start. <laughs> she told you she's hurt. So now you're gonna have to be man enough to negotiate with that hurt and understand that it's been four years of her by herself. Yes. By herself. That's not easy. Yes, Sean. 
Mr. Robinson, after a 12-year relationship with the defendant, she confessed that your three-year-old son, Brandon Jr., may not be your biological child. Yes, now you say your engagement to Ms. Fuller is broken off and your heart is in ruins yes, because of the possibility you may now lose your son, too. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Fuller, you admit that you were indeed sleeping with another man at the time Brandon Jr. was conceived. Yes, Your Honor. Furthermore, you acknowledge you hid your doubts about paternity from Mr. Robinson. Yes, Your Honor. Additionally, Mr. Robinson, you are asking the court to award you $100 to pay the fee to change Brandon Jr.'s name if indeed the results reveal you are not his father yes. and you have to move on without yes, him. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. So, Mr. Robinson, how did you find out Brandon Jr. may not be your biological son? It was maybe uh, six months. Six months. My son was six months. We had to separate because we had to move. So you all were in a relationship. We were in a relationship. Baby was what? Born. born yep. And, and we were living six together. Six months in. Six months in, we had to move. We fell on some hard times. Okay. okay? Respectively, we we moved back to. I moved back to my mom's. She moved back to her mom's. Okay. The day that it happened, it just so happened to be a birthday party also, okay? I take him to the birthday party. Later on, after the party is over, I drop him off at his grandmother's where I thought Miss Fuller would be, okay? Well, she, well, she didn't come down. That was fine. It was okay. I just dropped him off to his grandma. The next day comes, and I um, call. No answer. So I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, okay. So another day passed. I'm calling all day the next day. No answer. I'm like, man, what's going on? So maybe a day or so, I'm starting to get these phone calls, but they're private. But I'm not answering them. But the private phone calls are coming like every hour on the hour. So finally, you know, after so many private calls in a row for so many days, you know, you pick up, I pick up the phone and she's on the line. She's like, uh, hey, I'm about to be at Tower City. I'm about to be, can you meet us there? Uh, me and Brandon. At first I'm mad. I'm like, no, I hang up. She called back and, um, you know, I get, I get on the phone or whatever. Had to get myself together, you know, gather my thoughts, get myself together. And I was like, uh, okay, I'll meet you. But really, I was thinking about, you know, my son. So how did you find out that Brandon Jr. may not be your son? When did you get that news? He asked me when I contacted him if, if Brandon was his. So wait, when you were calling from the private number all those days and you finally got through, he asked you on the phone or he said, meet me and I want to talk about this? We, he asked me on the phone. He was mad at me and he was upset. He was wondering where we had been that whole week. And, um, he, um, had, where were you that whole week? I had left to go be with the guy that I thought the other wow. could be his father. So let me ask you this. What got in your mind to where when she finally called you from the private number, it was is Brandon Jr. my son? How did you come to that realization that that could be an issue? Why would you just disappear? Mm -hmm. What he, did you do? He started looking like the other guy to me when he was six months. I have a picture. Oh. Jerome, may I see that, please? Uh, to so me, he right just didn't around, look... Okay, now the pieces like are coming one, together. He didn't, look like, coming he, together. he didn't look like neither one of us to me at the time. And that's why the disappearing act happened, because you just... I was... Feeling guilty, my conscience was getting to me, mm -hmm. and I couldn't like look at him every day, and and I lied to him like all this time. Oh, wow. Like I'm sorry. <laughs> so, when Brandon Jr. started looking like the other guy, what did you say to Brandon Sr.? I didn't really say anything. Like, we were struggling at the time, so we had to move. And I didn't want to go back to my mother's. And I just thought, at the time, I thought it was a better move for me. And it wasn't. <laughs> so the truth is, while you all start struggling financially and all this was going on, you all trying to figure out where you gonna live, deep down inside, you're looking at your baby going, he does not look like this man. Yes. He looks like the other man. But you kept the whole relationship a secret. Hence, the private number. Wow. And all the while, Mr. Robinson, you're bonding with... Oh, yeah. This baby is named after you. Oh, yeah. It's your son. Sleeping on my chest at night, uh, just 
everything. I, I mean, I barely moved. I mean, you know, like I would sleep like this, bar real quiet, real move, real. I, I know still. that move, real He's, still. And it just, he just would lay on my chest and he would sleep. He's the only guy my son, my father, my son knows as a father. So that's my son. So that's my son. That's all. If he ran in this in here right now, daddy, 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 <laughs> he just gets so excited every time he sees me. I have pictures. If you, you would do. like to see, um, okay, with us bonding, Jerome, please pass that evidence up to me. He, oh, all of, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Thank my you. guy. <laughs> that's the first time I held him and fed him. So you love this child. Oh, this is your son, and until he's six months old, you have absolutely no idea. None, Your Honor. None. That he potentially couldn't be your son. Oh, no way! No way that I would ever have thought that, Your Honor, that he wasn't mine. Now, this is his birth certificate here. You put your name on here? Yes, I signed it. That boy changed my life. Brandon changed my life. I was on my... I was on my way to... <laughs> I was on my way to some bad things. When he was born, it's just like, I gotta stop. Brandon Jr. is three now. Three. So you spent the next two and a half years continuing... Yeah. ...to bond. Yeah. And then we had a falling out, like serious falling out. Uh, she got on, on um, social media on my phone, okay, but didn't close it, forgot to close it. So I'm sitting on the couch, I, I'm about to jump on my Facebook, but I'm looking at posts, my social media or whatever, I'm looking at posts like, wait a minute, this ain't mine, you know what I'm saying? So instantly I get kind of nosy, you know what I mean? And I start going in inboxes, reading inboxes. So I'm reading these inboxes, but she sent the one uh, message to the guy, and I guess that's when she went to go live with the guy, okay. saying that he didn't look anything like me and that she needed his help. You saw a message that basically said, the baby doesn't look anything like Brandon Sr. Right. So I need your help. Need your help. And how old was Brandon Jr. at that time? One and a half. About to be two in, like, the next month. So this was... was almost a year and a half later. Yep. Does that open the wound again? Definitely. It did. So I, what happened? I, I got upset, okay? Well, actually, I sat down on the couch at first, and I was like, mm. So I handed her the phone. I was like, read this. So she reading it, you know? She kind of got, got a, a little look on her face or whatever. And I, I got up after that, and um, I went to the washer. And I started taking the clothes out the washer and out the dryer and all of that stuff. And I was like, get out. But I'm like, leave Brandon, because you got to work tomorrow anyway, and it was my day to keep him anyway. No, 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 but I'm putting the clothes outside the house. All right, so you putting her clothes outside yeah. the house? <laughs> but we had some neighbors outside, okay? Okay. But so, we, so it spills from in the basement to outside. So we're outside and we're, we're, we're yelling, screaming back and forth at each other. Well, I'm doing most of the screaming, you know what I'm saying, and yelling or whatever. And um, the neighbors called the police. All right. We had a domestic disturbance out of that. So why were you still talking to this guy where he would find these emails? I met the guy a long time ago, like years ago, and we started seeing each other. And I still, I don't know, I just still kept talking to him or whatever, but it was off and on for about eight years or whatever. Around the time... It I, around went the, on for how long? It was like eight years off and on, but it wasn't like... We eight went, years off and on? Yes. <laughs> oh, until what time? Um, so around the time I got pregnant with my son, that's when I... Stop. My son is like, I wasn't supposed to have kids. Um, what do you have? Miracle. Mm. What do you have there? It's a calendar. A calendar. Jerome, please. I wasn't supposed to be able to have kids, so my so son was a like calendar. a miracle baby. This is a calendar that indicates the years you've been with Mr. Robinson. The second page of what you presented here indicates. In 2004, you meet the other potential father. Yes, Your Honor. Then you have a little break in 2005. 2006, you reconnect with that other potential father, and you're with him all the way through 2011. It was more like when we would get, in, when we would get into it, when he would put me out, that's who I would kick it with. That's who I would call. 
And during the time of conception, you were with this other guy as well. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Robinson, I can tell by the look on your face <laughs> you did not know this. Oh, no, Your Not at all, Your Honor. So what was your understanding of the relationship with the other guy? Because there's a lot of blue going on up there. No understanding, Your Honor. I didn't think it was another guy. No way. So this is your first time figuring that out right now? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Robinson, do you now feel like there's even more of a chance Brandon Jr. is not your biological child? I mean, yeah, eight years, Your Honor. I'm so confused. Look, um, but no, I feel That's understandable, like... given the circumstances yeah. and the information that's been presented in court today. Ms. Fuller. Yes, Your Honor. How do you keep an eight-year affair a secret? I mean, like... <laughs> Go ahead and talk to him, because I can see you... I'm sorry. I understand, Felicia. I am so sorry that I did this to you. That's my dude. You hear me? Because if he's not the father, like, it's just gonna be me and him, I feel like. And now, your baby has bonded with Mr. Robinson. I mean, he considers him his daddy. Yes. So, I hate to bring him up, <laughs> but how are you explaining all of this to this other guy? Does I mean... he know that... Brandon Jr. could potentially be his biological child? Yes, he knows. If he is his biological father, does he want to be a part of Brandon Jr.'s life? I wouldn't want him to be a part of his life because he's not, like, the type of guy that you just want to raise your kid or, you know... It's just the kind you just want to go to his house every time you get in an argument with your boyfriend. At the, at the time, yes. <laughs> so the truth is, with this mistake, you could lose a good man and your son could lose a great father. Yes, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Robinson? Yes, ma'am. Do you want to still be in a relationship with Ms. Fuller if, in fact, it's determined that he is not? Your Honor, a relationship as far as what? Like, our friendship that we have or... No, I mean a relationship. Like together? No. She broke up with me. Okay? We were supposed to get married in July. Okay? So, when Miss Fuller told me, you know, that she didn't want to be with me anymore or whatever, I said, fine, but there is no coming back. When you decide, okay, hey, I've sold my royal oats, I'm gonna come back and, you know, be with you. I won't be there like but that. But that's not why I but broke I, up with you. But I will why always did you break up? Yeah, I would love... I did it for myself. I did it because I need to learn how to love myself more instead of trying Amen. to build a relationship with somebody and I'm not loving myself. I'm loving you more than I'm loving me. Like, that's not right. I need to build myself up. Mm -hmm. So that's why I broke up with him. It wasn't because of, you know, I wanted to be with somebody else. Like, I just feel like I need to get myself together and my life together yes. for my son. Respect that. Thank Understandable, you. Ms. Fuller. Now, Mr. Robinson, I want to ask you this. In your petition to the court, you indicated you were also requesting that the court award you $100 because if Brandon Jr. is not your biological child, you want his name to be changed. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you, Your Honor. That was said out of anger, okay? I, you know, at the time, but... Are you withdrawing your petition because you haven't quite decided yet and it's something you would like to revisit at another time? Uh... Uh... I... I... I uh... I don't want to change his name. I don't want to change his name. Everybody know him. Brandon. Brandon. Everybody call him Brandon. Brandon. Lil BB. You know, it's... You can't just take that away from him. So, with that said, Jerome, I think it's time we go to the result. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Robinson v. Fuller, as it pertains to the paternity of Brandon Robinson Jr., Mr. Brandon Robinson Sr., 
you are his father. <laughs> well, I don't even have to ask you how you feel. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, this, this, like my son say, uh, he come to me, Daddy, he be like, Daddy, this the best day ever. You know how he always say, <laughs> best day ever. So this, this ranks right it. up there, finding out that, you know. <laughs> how you feel, Miss Fuller? I'm relieved. <laughs> I'm happy. We have to understand. <sighs> Jerome, how many times do I have to say it? But it never gets old. You cannot seek counsel under the covers. <laughs> This is the perfect opportunity to begin again. Now, in that new beginning, the first thing you have to do is exactly what you spoke about. Learn how to love yourself more Amen. than you do. Because that's going to affect the choices you make in life. You understand? Yes, sir. If you don't feel you're worth it, you're going to keep making the wrong decisions. And you are worth it. All right? Yes, sir. I wish you all the very, you, very you. best of luck. Thank you, honor. I'm so happy, Jerome. I love this news, don't you? Great news, best news. This is great. the best day ever, best right? Best day ever. <laughs> Congratulations, court is adjourned.